What's up? Today we are talking about consciousness and sleep. So what that's going to look like, I'm going to introduce what this term means, consciousness. We're going to talk briefly about hypnosis, which is one type of consciousness. And then we're going to spend most of this video talking about sleep, the sleep stages, what can go wrong during sleep. So when I use the word consciousness, we've talked about the unconscious this semester, but consciousness, it's, it's the opposite. It's when we are aware of our thinking, when we are aware of our surroundings, it's about how alert you are and whether or not you can respond to the things happening around you, the stimuli and situations around you. So it's opposed, it's the opposite of the unconscious. So remember, Freud said that the unconscious is that which we are not aware of, the things buried or repressed within us that influence our thinking and behavior. Our consciousness, that's what we are aware of. And it's, and it's sort of the state of our awareness. So there are three types of states of consciousness really that we're talking about. Um, we've already talked about the influence of drugs. That was our last video. If you haven't watched that, make sure you go watch neurotransmitters and drugs so you understand how drugs impact our brain, our thinking, our consciousness. Today, we're gonna to talk briefly about hypnosis and then sleep, okay? So hypnosis, what is that, Mr. Jones? Like, why are we talking about hypnosis in AP Psychology? I thought this was a scientific class. Well, hypnosis actually has some evidence that supports it, okay? It is a controversial therapy that has been found to actually be most effective when helping people deal with pain. So um, symptoms of cancer, um, folks dealing with chemotherapy, in some cases, symptoms of ADHD, dementia, skin conditions, that hypnosis is actually shown to be effective, okay? Now, what is it? It's when somebody responds to the suggestions of an expert, okay? Um, you should not let your buddy hypnotize you. You should not go and get hypnotized by a YouTube video, okay? Um, hypnosis can be done in some states by a, a licensed professional, someone who can practice this. There's a news case, if you um, do a Google search for Florida principal, Florida man, Florida principal hypnosis, you'll learn about what can go wrong with people who are unlicensed try to practice hypnosis, especially on teenagers, especially on students. Um, so the two things that happen during hypnosis, first off, when an individual is in a hypnotic trance, okay, the state of consciousness where they are open to suggestions, they can actually change their behaviors after they leave the trance. So someone can enter this unique state of consciousness and the hypnotizer can make suggestions. And then after that, that state, that trance is over, after that state is over, the person might still act on those suggestions. So this is the idea that, um, you know, when someone is being hypnotized, they might be told that, you will stop craving cigarettes, or you will stop eating so much food, or you will sleep better. That would be an after hypnotic suggestion that is gonna come into play. The other thing that sometimes happens is that you forget, so this word amnesia means to have memory loss or to forget things. Some of you forget what happened while you were in that hypnotic state. So this is not actually that common with hypnosis. We more have amnesia uh, resulting from drug use or brain damage, brain injury. Um, but you could be asked about post-hypnotic amnesia, means to lose your memory during a hypnotic state. Suggestion is when you do the thing that was suggested to you. How does hypnosis work, Mr. Jones? Well, there are two theories. The first theory, put a star by this guy, Ernst Hilgard. Hilgard did hypnosis, okay? Hilgard hypnosis. He said that what happens during hypnosis is that your brain and your body, they kind of separate. They dissociate from one another, okay? So your brain is aware of some things, but your body will do things that it wouldn't normally do because your body is sort of separate. It's almost as if that like the spinal cord was being turned off. So your brain can have one thing going on and your body can have something else going on. And you might think that sounds weird. That sounds crazy. Think back to those split brain patients. They kind of had that situation where their body and their brain were separated. So Hilgard says that 
The reason why hypnosis works is because that something is happening where the brain and body are separating, dissociating. Now, the other theory of why hypnosis works is called role theory. It's more about not something happening physiologically in the body, but it's more like the subject takes on this role. They know what's expected of them and therefore they act a certain way. They're not faking it, but they're, they're sort of unconsciously, subconsciously going along with what's expected of them. So um, it's less about what the body and mind are doing. So um, I'll ask you on class, which of these two theories you like more, better explains it. And we'll watch an actual video of some athletes getting hypnotized so you can kind of see what it might look like for people. Quick check for understanding based on the terms I just shared. One, two, three, four. See if you can answer these without your notes. Feel free to pause this. Make sure you know these because you might have questions like this on our quiz. Okay? Great. Hopefully you did those. The rest of the lecture today, the rest of the video is going to be all about sleep. So take a look at this chart here. I think you should be able to see it okay. You may need to zoom in a little bit. What do you notice about the sleep stages? Okay? So we have some different colors here blue, red, and yellow. I wonder what that means. Um, we have different cycles, first, second, third, fourth, fifth cycles. They look different. So these later cycles have a lot of yellow. The first cycle didn't really have any yellow at all. It had more blue and red. There was no blue going on over here. Okay. We have a wake over here on the left. So it looks like this, the yellow segments here are like maybe when you're close to being awake, Okay. I want you to be able to look at something like this and try to figure out what's going on by looking at these images, and then we will go into detail here. So why do I have a picture of fat man here? Fats. Well, the way that we know you are sleeping and the way that we can tell how you're progressing through your sleep cycle is based on the brain waves that your neurons are giving off. The, remember, what does this E stand for? Electroencephalogram, electro, we're measuring your electricity. Okay, so there are different types of brain waves, and the mnemonic that I use to remember those brain waves is BAT D REM or BAT DREAM, right? BAT D REM, BAT DREAM, BAT DREAM. Okay, so Batman, we got bats of sleep over here. It's just to help you remember BAT D REM, the BAT D, beta, alpha, theta. Delta. And this is in order from you being most awake, alert, aroused, excited, paying attention to the least amount of brain activity when you were in deep delta sleep. We're going to talk about each of these and talk about what it looks like as you go from being super awake and alert to super asleep and back. Okay, so when you are awake, there are two types of waves beta and alpha. Beta waves are you are most alert and awake when you're really paying attention and taking notes and thinking and paying attention. Okay. Uh, I think when I see beta, I think about the beta club, right? The beta club is supposed to be for this, this group of students that are super alert and paying attention and with it and focused. Beta waves are for folks in beta club when you're super focused on something, really accomplishing something. Your alpha waves are when you're more relaxed. Maybe alpha waves are like when you're at home, sitting on the couch, in your bed, playing on your phone, you're awake, but you're relaxed. So what happens is your brain starts to slow down from beta waves to alpha waves, and you start to fall into what's called the hypnagogic state. Well, hypna, what does that refer to? Well, we just talked about hypnosis. It's sort of the state is kind of, in between being awake and being asleep. It's as you are starting to fall asleep. And now, when you fall asleep, when you cross that line, you are now giving off beta waves. B-A-T, bat, okay? We call this first stage of sleep, it's stage one, and technically it's called non-REM one. It's when you've just fallen asleep. At this point in time, if something or someone wakes you up, you may wake up feeling like you weren't actually asleep. Your eyes may roll back a little bit, but your eyelids could still be open. Your, your, your parasympathetic system kicks in, right? The parasympathetic is what slows you down. So slower heart breathe, slower breathing, 
slower blood pressure and your, your body brain temperature actually slow down, okay? Sometimes we'll like twitch um, and it may be like we are falling asleep, okay? Um, you may be aware that you're falling asleep. That's all non-REM one, okay? Slowing down the parasympathetic nervous system is active. Guess what comes after non-REM one? Non-REM two, it's like medium sleep. You still have theta waves, okay? Um, and there's something actually, put a star by this point. In stage two, we have sleep spindles. Sleep spindles, it's a two word phrase, two S words. They, they both happen in stage two. There's even slower heart rate, lower temperature. It's hard to wake you up. Your brain is slowing down more. Everything is slowing down more, okay? So it's just a little deeper than non-REM one. Guess what we think happens after non-REM two? Okay, here's non-REM non two. Look at those sleep spindles. It's when the brain sort of freaks out. Okay, guess what happens after non-REM two? Non-REM three, good job. Okay, this is deep delta sleep. Look at how few neurons are firing, how little electrical activity there is in the brain. Deep delta waves, the D and D should remind us of the D and delta. This is your deepest sleep, okay? Now, something tricky happens after non-REM three, okay? After non-REM three, some people think you go into REM. You do not go into REM. It's a cycle. So here's what happens. You go stage one, two, three, two, one, and then you enter REM sleep. Put a star by REM sleep. It's the most important sleep stage. We have bat D REM, okay? In REM sleep, your eyes actually look like they're going crazy. They're twitching all over the place. These muscles are spasming. It's called random eye movement. That's where REM comes from, okay? Um, this is the stage where you dream, okay? And so what they do, even though your eyes are going crazy and the brain is firing like crazy, it's called paradoxical sleep. It's a paradox. It's unusual because your body is awake, but what happens is your brain stem shuts down your body and your muscles. Your skeletal system gets paralyzed because your, your, your brain doesn't want you to act out on the dreams that you're having. It knows that, that you could get hurt doing that. Um, so what it does is it freezes your body. So REM is when your body gets to rest, okay? If you have gone several days, several nights without very much sleep, you'll have what's called REM rebound, which means sometimes you might skip stages one, two, three, and go straight into REM if your body is really exhausted and you've not been taking care of yourself, okay? And we'll talk more about dreams um, in a minute. So here's what sleep looks like. Hypnogram, a measurement of sleeping. So um, the green represents being awake, okay? Um, this yellow lines over here represent the REM stage. And you may notice that the longer you sleep, the more REM you have and the more dreaming that occurs, okay? Dreaming happens most after you've been sleeping for eight, nine, 10 hours, more in the morning, okay? The red is your deep delta sleep when it's not easy to wake up, okay? So we got stage one, two, three, two, one, REM. One, two, three, two, one, REM. One, two, only a little bit of time in stage three two, one, REM. And then if you look down here, the longer you sleep, you actually don't spend as much time in deep delta sleep where your brain is off and slow in delta wave mode. What happens night goes on, you spend more time in REM because it's like your body knows that it's almost time to wake up, so it stays closer to wake up mode, okay? If you don't get enough sleep, if you try and wake up out of a red deep delta sleep cycle, you're gonna be really groggy and it's gonna be really hard for you. That's why it's so important that y'all get at least um, you know, four or five sleep cycles, right? You need to get that REM sleep. And each cycle is about an hour and a half. So four cycles is six hours of sleep. That's like the bare minimum that you need. Y'all as teenagers need even more sleep, right? Y'all should be getting five or six cycles of, of sleep probably, okay? Between at least eight, nine, maybe 10 hours or more on the weekends if you need to catch up on your REM, okay? I would love for you to stop and draw what it looks like, draw out a little sleep cycle chart. So your graph does not need to look as good as these, but what you should have, all right? So I would, it's maybe 
Um, here's what it would look like. So it starts off and it goes super deep. And then I would do something to mark the fact that REM here is different, right? Your first REM comes at the end of the whole cycle. And then the next one isn't as deep, okay? And then there's REM, and then it's not as deep, REM, and then not as deep, and then REM. And this is sort of what your graph should look like, okay? And then maybe what I would label is um, beta is super alert and awake. You might want to put alpha is awake but relaxed, okay? And then we got theta waves, delta waves, theta waves, REM, all right, now then theta, delta, theta, REM, and then there might be a point here, maybe you have one more delta, and then over here, you're just going to have the theta waves, and then REM, and then theta waves, you're in non-REM one and two. This is kind of what your chart should look like. That's as relaxed up there, alert and relax, okay? This is what your sleep cycle look like, and as the night goes on, more and more time spent in REM. So hopefully you have this down in your notebook. You can kind of use it as a reference. So this would be non-REM one, two, and three, sort of all the way across. And then of course the REM stages would be up here, represented by these jagged lines. Okay, great graph, Mr. Jones. Thanks. Um, do a little check for understanding, right? Make sure you understand at this point, what waves would the brain giving off? What waves would the brain be giving off down here? What waves for C would the brain be giving off here? And what waves are represented by this black bar? Make sure you can answer those questions without looking at your notes. Probably should have put the slide before I went over it. Oh well. Here's another check mark saying, you're gonna pause this, make sure you can answer these questions. Again, without your notes. On the test, you will only have one minute per question. You're not gonna have a ton of time to look things up and to check your notes. So you need to make sure that this stuff is getting into your brain as we go. We're gonna talk about dreams and sleep issues. So I did mention dreams occur during REM. Well, what are nightmares? Nightmares are just bad dreams. So those also happen during REM, okay? When you dream, your dreams have sort of a plot, okay? Uh, we call that the manifest content. Manifest, or like the main content. The plot, what is happening in your dreams. Freud said, your dreams also have a hidden meaning. The word hidden is a synonym for latent. Latent, it's like the meaning might not become clear until later, latent, later. It's hidden for now. Freud believed, and a lot of folks do, that your dreams meant something, okay? Um, and some people have control over their dreams. We call that lucid dreaming. It's when you become aware that you are dreaming in the middle of your dream. So that's an interesting experience. I'm sure y'all want to talk about during class. Why do we dream? Well, while we're dreaming, we're solving problems. We are showing creativity. Our body can practice responding to new situations and threats. And the most important thing here, and I probably should have bold this, is that dreaming helps you with your memories, okay? As your neurons fire, they form connections and bonds through those synapses that will help you remember things in the future. The more you sleep, the more you will remember, okay? Staying up all night before a test, not a good idea because your brain needs the sleep and the dream time to help those memories stick in your brain, okay? So what most research shows is that the reason why you dream what you dream, uh, they disagree with Freud that there's a hidden meaning. Activation synthesis theory is the most common scientific explanation for dreams. And what it says here is that as you sleep, neurons fire sort of randomly. Maybe it's based on what you experienced that day or what you watched right before you went to bed, but the neurons kind of firing on their own as you sleep, right? As you are solving problems and getting creativity and improving your memory. And that dreams are just your brain trying to make a story, trying to make sense out of that random firing, okay? So like no deep symbolic purpose, it's just your brain sort of adjusting to what you've been living through and trying to prepare you for the next day. Our last section here is what can go wrong with sleep. So sleep apnea, they love to ask about, put a star by it, say apnea. If you've ever seen someone around a family member who wears one of these masks, usually that's for sleep apnea. And you might think, no, no, it's because they snore. Well, snoring is tied to sleep apnea, as are a number of other health conditions. It's when you stop breathing during sleep. Something goes wrong with your medulla, right? And your pons, 
and for, for a split second, you stop breathing. So the individual will wake up, almost suffocating, they'll gasp for air, they'll breathe, and then they'll fall back asleep. In some cases, this can happen dozens or even hundreds of times a night, and the person may not realize it's happening. They may not realize that they're never getting good sleep, they're never getting into delta sleep, and they're never getting into REM sleep. So their brain and their body are never recovering. Really problematic, it's linked to heart disease, obesity, and other health conditions. Okay. Less serious than sleep apnea, um, but still pretty interesting. Night terrors, most common among kids and folks who are dealing with PTSD. These are not the same as nightmares, right? Because nightmares are dreams that happen in REM. These happen in non-REM episodes. The people's muscles are not locked up. They can walk around. You may have younger siblings who like walk into a room and screamed or shouted or thrashed or flailed and tried to fight. And when they woke up, they didn't know what was going on. Those are night terrors, okay? Don't wake someone up from a night terror. Just kind of safely guide them back to their bed because they won't remember. You don't want to wake them up because if you wake them up when they're in the middle of this fight or flight response, when they're in the middle of having their sympathetic nervous system activated, it could be really terrifying for them, okay? So night terrors, scary, but common especially in kids and folks who had some kind of trauma. Sleepwalking, to amble means to walk. Som means sleep. So it literally means sleep ambling or sleep walking, okay? Common non-REM because your body is not locked up, right? Your muscles are not frozen. Narcolepsy, um, it's when you fall asleep without meaning to. Uh, with a really bad narcolepsy, folks can't drive, operate machinery because it could be dangerous for them and for others. Um, the pineal gland and melatonin, we talked about those earlier with neurotransmitters and the endocrine system, but sometimes sleep issues can come because of our circadian rhythms. Put a star by that term. Circadian, circ, means like a circle, a cycle, like a clock. That's what I think about here. It's the fact that our bodies have natural rhythms when they like to be awake and they like to be asleep, okay? If you go across time zones, you're messing with your circadian rhythms. It takes about one day to recover for every time zone you cross. So if you go to California, three time zones, it'll take you about three days before your body gets used to the California time. And when you fly back to Atlanta, it'll take you three days to adjust back. If you make a longer trip, if you go 11 hours to East Asia, it's gonna take you 11 days to adjust. And then when you come back, 11 days for your melatonin and pineal gland your biological clocks to adjust to that, okay? Um, as you get older, your biological clocks also change. Older people are better in the morning, younger people are better, as y'all know, later at night, okay? Um, sleep paralysis, they don't normally ask about that on the AP exam, but it's, it's those moments when um, you are in REM, so your brain is going crazy, but your muscles are frozen. Not a problem while you're asleep for your brain to go crazy with dreams while your muscles are frozen, but sometimes people have some sort of issue where they will actually wake up, they will gain some consciousness. So they will be aware of their surroundings, but they'll feel like there are sounds or things around them because their brain is fine. Those neurons are going crazy and they can't move because their brain has locked up those muscles as part of the REM cycle. So this would be a sleep disorder where your, your brain and body um, and consciousness are a little bit altered and messed up. So think about which of these sounds scariest to you, and we'll talk about these in class as well. Sorry we went a little bit long, um, but here's another check for understanding for you. We'll have a quiz over this stuff in our next class. Make sure you can do it without your notes as well, because you won't have your notes on the test. Thanks, y'all. Um, I'll post these as well. I'll see y'all soon.